lead. We are in a fight against the devil's schemes. We struggle against the spirit of conquest and dominance. We struggle against the spirit of fear. We struggle against the spirit of exclusion. We struggle against the spirit of superiority. We struggle against the spirit of internalized hate. We struggle against the hurts and horrors of our past. I mean, it would be so much easier if we just had to deal with evil individuals. Because people, after all, can be controlled sometimes, defeated sometimes, even eliminated. But the type of evil that this text calls us to is more elusive. When I read the scripture for today, a song from the animated movie Moana came to mind. The song, This Is My Fight Song. This is my fight song, my take back my life song, prove I'll be all right song. My power's turned on. Starting right now, I'll be strong. I'll play my fight song. And if, I don't care if anyone else believes. Today's scripture is a fight song. It's a take back our life song. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So Paul provides for us a fight song to call forth believers to engage in the spiritual battle. <clears throat> for the spiritual forces of evil destroys anything that doesn't mirror its image, that doesn't speak its language. It destroys anything that doesn't worship its gods or submit to its whims. Under the influences of the forces of evil, you cage people out of a manufactured rationale to mask your xenophobia and notions of superiority. Under the influence, under the spirit of evil, you destroy the earth because it has no spiritual value to you. It's simply a commodity. When taken over by the spiritual forces of evil, you never see yourself as complete. You never see yourself in the image and likeness of God. For the image of the dominant culture has twisted your image of yourself. And now all you can see is what you're not. Make no doubt about it. If you're for justice, if you're for peace, if you're for inclusion, if you are for love and compassion, if you endeavor to love yourself and to love your neighbor and to love God with all your being and believe that death and hate will never have the last word, and you live in a world, as Marvin Gaye said in his song, if you live in a world destined to die, while believing in a radical, transforming faith and awakening God, then, my friend, you are at war. And you need a fight song. You need words to strengthen you. You need armor to protect you. For you are at odds with the cultural and economic and political forces that shape our world. So how do, you, how do you fight this war? How do you stand against such a powerful opponent? Well, first you have to identify who the real enemy is, which is very important because that's what directs our efforts, away from focusing just on personalities. You know, some 
sometimes we find it so easy, too easy, to label those whom we disagree with as evil, dehumanizing those whose political allegiances and economic theories or lifestyles differ from our own. It's also helpful to remember that evil can be deceptively attractive. It can show up offering you the thing you most desire. It can show up in your passivity as well as your arrogance. Evil can be alluring and attractive as well as hurtful and repulsive. But it's still evil nonetheless. This text called to spiritual warfare reminds us that we are called into a struggle deeper than private temptations or agendas. And to remind us that we often fail to recognize the true enemy. By putting this in a spiritual context, Paul moves us past scapegoating. You know, emptying all our disdain on one thing or one person and then using everything we have to destroy that one thing or one person. Here we are told evil is more elusive than that. It's systemic, like, like the prison industrial complex. Because many times evil lurks beneath the camouflage of what some may call cultural common sense. I mean, evil can work even in compromise in the name of being reasonable while not wanting to acknowledge the personal benefits from unjust systems. Paul might at least suggest that the far more dangerous enemies are systems structures and habits that are racist, misogynist, hedonist, and materialist, just to name a few. Now, I know Ephesians 6 military imagery makes at least some Christians very nervous. And I am among the first to admit that a text that seems to blend the church's faith and military force is a dangerous one, both spiritually and politically. For people have been killed and land has been taken and cultures destroyed in the name of a twisted militaristic Christianity. Acknowledging that there are those who believe to be Christian is to be in a kind of warfare to essentially declare war on other religions and people of different cultures and even people of different gender expression, even on other Christians. Church history contains far too many examples of the blessings armies and weapons intended to annihilate other members of God's creation. Church history contains too many examples of cultural crusades intended to annihilate other expressions of God's creation, thereby promoting a single narrative of who is beautiful, what is sacred, and who is worthy of respect and protection. So the military imagery can be very dangerous, but despite these dangers, the battle imagery in this passage can helpfully remind us that while the arc of the universe may bend towards justice, there are forces working to push things in the opposite direction. And we cannot ignore the daily reality of evil and the fact that we 
are in for a fight. Every day I see something on YouTube that so offends me in the name of Christianity, I think we should come up with another name. <laughs> But a lesson I learned in grade school, in the South Side, just because you don't want to fight doesn't mean there will be moments when you won't have to. It's a matter of survival. It's a matter of standing up in the face of opposition. So my beloved, by professing to be followers of Christ, we have already been brought into a battle. Not to beat other people down, but to defend all that we are. Because Paul, for the most part of his ministry, was in jail. In Ephesus and Philippi and Caesarea and Rome. Not for days or months, but for years. Paul was incarcerated. And in Rome, he would have been chained to a soldier, to a squad of soldiers, where they changed guard every six hours. So around the clock, he had a daytime and a nighttime chain on his arm, and the other part of it fastened to a Roman soldier, and then fastened to each other. You know, it's interesting, this war imagery because the tools of war are both beautiful and frightening at the same time. Roman soldiers wore things like helmets and breastplates and shields and swords as part of their effort to help keep the Roman Empire on top of its citizens in check and under their rule. These were instruments of terror used to intimidate and suppress people. In ancient military weaponry, there was a helmet for every mace and a breastplate for every dagger, a shield for every type of sword. So I wonder how many times, how many hours, and how many days did Paul look upon the items of warfare that his captives had on, his captors, I'm sorry, had on. I wonder when did it dawn on him as he looked at their military display every day, when did he have the thought that even in the presence of all that might, that because of our faith, we were equipped for battle as well. appropriating those symbols of destruction and dominance and using those same symbols to image how we must defend our spirits. Not to attack or subdue others, but to defend what God has put in motion. But this time, not just the weight of steel, that even as it protects you, inhibits how you move, but providing a deep living and breathing protection. And once we have this protection, we are told to stand firm. Now that's interesting because standing firm is not something you can do only by yourself. You stand firm as a community. In fact, we might interpret that to say, all of you together keep on being strengthened by the Lord. Stand firm. For it isn't just about you. I know that's hard, but it's not just about you. It's about all of us. It's about compassion for all. It's about justice for all. It's love in action. So this scripture is a message to the church. You know, when I was in grade school, they used to, to make you fight me like, that is one hit my hand. And then if you hit somebody's hand, then that means you had to fight. Well, <laughs> the baddest one has hit our hand. <laughs> and we are called to battle this enemy that 
follow a Palestinian Jew who was a radical voice in a corrupt and oppressive time, who was both a rabbi and a convicted felon. We profess a very, very dangerous faith. This is a message to encourage us in the face of that power. As sweet honey in the rock sing, we who believe in freedom cannot rest. Not needing the clutch for power, not needing the light just to shine on me. I need to be one in the number as we stand against tyranny. We, believers of God who believe in freedom, cannot rest. Because there's a battle going on. And it's up to us. Who is going to fight to set the captives free? Who is going to fight for moral decisions to be made? Who is going to fight to care for the least of us? That's why the old folks in my tradition would sing their fight song. And I apologize for the male gender imagery. But I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. That's why they sang that song. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Be encouraged. We are in for a fight, but we have already been assured that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Because we have been providing protection. Protection. An alternate worldview that protects our hearts. An alternate belief system that motivates our brains and our intellect that helps us discern truth from fabrication and helps us to follow a moral compass. Our belief in spite of the evidence and then watching the evidence change will shield us from the blows being thrown at us. The wisdom of tradition, our sword. Prayer, our director and our refueling station, and the unpredictable movement of the Holy Spirit gives us a cutting edge. Yes, we are fully equipped. We are imperfect superheroes with bad backs and aching arches. <laughs> protecting the vulnerable. And all we have to do is believe that together we can be an army of the beloved community. Amen. Together we can be those who stand against the powers of this dark world in a dark time. Together we can be those that believe and stand against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So people of God, as you go about your week, sing your fight song. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground. And by doing that, you will cause miracles even cause the wind to change 